Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. Today we're looking at level 7 of beginner exercises. Today again we're looking particularly at hard surface modeling and the subdivision surface modifier. Do remember that there's playlists of lots of different courses. Just check the playlist in the channel. You can also look at my website for courses which are in more of a sequence and progress in levels. Also if that's not enough there's great courses by CG Boost which I can thoroughly recommend. Again, links in the description. That's an affiliated link so you'll help me if you click on those. And thanks to all those who watch an advert for me, that's greatly appreciated also. So let's get started. Here's the first shape. Now I've given it a nice shiny material that helps us to see the curves, but can also help us to see pinching. Okay, so a nice easy one to start us off. As usual, have a go yourself and I'll explain how I did it. Okay, so I'll grab this in the Y axis, move it across so we can just about see it still. And Shift A to add, and this time we're adding a plane. Into edit mode with tab, and then into edge mode with two. And let's select this back edge here, go to side view and extrude that so it's got a bit of a curve. Something like that. Always a bit tricky to see planes from side view. Now it's simple enough, just go into the modifiers with the wrench or spanner as we like to say in England, up to the modifier stack and subdivision surface modifier, or subsurf as many people call it. I'll up the resolution in the viewport Lots of people ask me about what the quality means. Absolutely no idea. It gives us a little message saying accuracy of vertex position. Lower value is faster but less precise. There we go. I always leave it on three. Okay, so we've pretty much got it. Perhaps just moving this face down in the Z axis and we're a bit closer, aren't we? So as long as you've got something like that, hopefully you're getting the idea. The importance of this is to start thinking about how you can create things like panels or maybe something like armor on a body and how the subdivision surface modifier takes our shape and curves it and smooths it. Okay, so nice easy one to start off with. Let's go for the second one. Okay, so here it is. How do we get the sharpness around the very edges so that it's not curved? And your hint is supporting loops. Have a go at that. So in order to create this one, I've brought back my original and I'll shift D in the X axis to move that across. And the way I've done it is into edit mode Control R to create loop cuts and just go around adding edge loops and dragging them across so that they support the edges. And we've got the edges going all the way to the corners so we haven't got this smoothness anymore. I'm just going to right click and shade smooth on these. One thing that's worth noting, if I select the original and go to edit mode and let's choose all the outside edges. I'm going to press N on my keyboard and there's vertex data and edge data and there's a bevel weight and a mean crease. If I increase the mean crease, you can see that it's doing the job for me. So that's acting like there's supporting loops. That can be very useful. The reason that I'm not using that for these exercises is so that we can understand what the topology is doing and things like these tools, what are they actually doing? What's the theory behind them in a sense? So yes, you can use things like the mean crease, you can use bevel modifiers and so forth and therefore use the bevel weight here but it's a good idea to understand the topology before you use those modifiers because it's really easy to come into problems and not really understand why it's happening. So for now, we're just understanding the topology and we're using supporting loops. So yes, this has a lot more topology than this one. And later on, you'll see that I add loads more than is necessary with these sort of tools. Okay, so on to the third one. Hopefully nothing too taxing again, but just building up your confidence again, the hint is supporting loops. So have a go at that. Okay, so I'll grab this in the Y and move it across. I'll bring back the second one that I've made and duplicate it in the X like this. So we want to create a sharp edge down here. Let's go into edit mode and we want to select this loop across here. Remember, you can come across to this tool here. So it's the on cage button and then you can actually see the edges on top of the model. This can be awkward as it does change their position slightly from where they truly are, so do be aware of that. If I now press Control B, and I've used the wheel to create one more edge loop, and set that back out of edit mode, we can see we've got that sharp line. So it's just to highlight the fact that we can create edge loops like this, and create sharp points like that. Now if I turn the on cage off, you can see actually they're quite close to each other. So just be aware that this is giving a rough estimation of where these things are, and helping you to be able to see them and grab them. Okay, so again, not too taxing, but we're building up slowly. Okay, so on to shape four, getting a bit more complicated now, but hopefully with your understanding of what we've done already, this should make sense. So have a go at that. Okay, so I'll grab this in the Y axis, 
I'll bring back the other one that I was using. I think this one, yep, that would be the best one. Shift D, X, move that across and into edit mode. So a loop down the middle here. Now let's create a loop cut on the side here as well. And then I can grab these faces and pull them up. So three to face mode, box select those. I've got a few extra here so I can control box select to get rid of those. G then Z to move them up. Let's go to object mode and see what we've got. Okay, so we've got the shape, but we haven't got the sharpness. So once again, we use our proximity loops or supporting loops. So into edge mode, I'll turn my cage on and select this edge loop with Alt left click and this edge loop with Shift Alt left click. Control B to bevel those. Now you can see this very slightly awkward because I've got that cage option on. So I'm going to right click to sort of cancel that in mid operation and turn off my cage and Control B. And as soon as I do that, I can actually see where my bevel is being positioned. So somewhere around there, back into object mode and we can see we've got the same shape. So once again, it's about those supporting loops. The best thing though is to not add the supporting loops until you've got that basic shape. The same as I did there. I added the bevel once I was happy that I had this outline shape. Okay, so the last one for today. I'm not going to give you any hints because I actually want you to make some mistakes here because that will help me illustrate a certain point I want to make. So have a go at that and don't worry if it messes up. Just see how you get on. Okay, so once again, I've brought back my original shape. Let's go into edit mode and let's create the first two at the top. So control R to create a loop cut and I'll do two loops here and I'll use these faces here and here, but they're a bit wide at the moment. Now the sensible thinking is to do a loop cut down here and a loop cut down here. This will make sense for both these boxes up here, but also this shape in here. So I'll do that, two loop cuts, mouse wheel, and then we've got the shape ready down here as well as these two boxes up here. Then I can grab this edge along here and scale them in the X to bring them out slightly. And if I press three to go to face mode, let's select these two and extrude them down. Now that's actually a mistake to do that because now I need to go in and do my loop cuts here and one inside here and then one inside here. And you can see it's becoming quite messy and it's affecting the shape down here as well. So I'm going to undo that. And instead of extruding, I do an inset first. Now this is really important and this is why I wanted you to make those mistakes so you could see and understand topology flow. What we have here now is topology flow going around our shape. So we've got the supporting edge loops already there and I can easily control R and add more supports in here if I want to. But the important thing is that the flow is going around so I can easily select these face loops with Alt left click. Now if I select these inside boxes and extrude downwards, you can see it's got a much tighter and supported rim at the top there. But we still need some support to give it this edge here. Now at this point I'm going to do a mirror down the middle because I think that will speed things up so I only have to edit on one side. So let's go to my favorite tool, edit, auto mirror, in the X axis, auto mirror. And that creates my mirror and the clipping and deletes half my object. And auto mirror can be found in the add-ons, just make sure you tick it and enable it. Notice though that I've got this odd shape at the top. That's because my mirror is not at the top. So it's subdividing it first, creating slight smoothness and then adding the mirror. If I now put the mirror to the top, you can see it gets rid of that. So it mirrors it first and then subdivides it. I'll just minimize the mirror so we can still see the subdivision surface modifier. And you can see already that it's actually created some support here. So even adding an edge loop right in the middle here offers some difference to our curve. We will, however, have to add an edge loop supporting down here but it will affect the bottom here as well, so this shape here. So it may be a good idea to model this part first and then see the impact of that edge loop. So I'm going to take these two faces, I'll widen this slightly, so I'll select this edge loop coming down here and grab that in the X. You can also press GG to edge slide and then I'll select this face and this face. Now do remember, don't just press extrude, and scale it in to get the same as this, we need to inset first, so I to inset. Now this one I need to have the boundary turned off so that it goes across my mirror. And now I want to extrude that out and I'll grab it in the X. Remember you can't scale in the X 
when you've got a mirror on, you grab in the X to pull them together. Okay, so at the moment it's fairly similar to this one, although it sticks out at the top here instead of inwards, that doesn't matter too much. So I need to create some support for these up here. So if I do a loop cut now, it's going all the way in, and it's affecting my bottom one as well. And can you see it's giving this sharpness down here. But it's adding the support that I need up the top here, as you can see for those. So we want to somehow remove it from this section, but keep it in this section. And this is a common problem you're going to come up against. If I do a loop cut across here, so Control R, I do need to just double check that it's keeping the curve. So let's go to side view with three on my numpad and just grab that and follow the curve along. Now if I go to vertex mode, grab this one and attach it to the next one there. But remember, you need to go across to your tools, options, auto merge so that they'll merge together. So GG, slide it across and they should be merged. So if I press G now, they're merged together using the auto merge tick box there. Now I can go back to edge mode and select this edge down here. Notice that it only selects the edge up until that vertex that I've joined and press delete dissolve edges. So you can see that I've got the support for these but it's not interfering with this shape now. Yes we have got a triangle here and the way to get rid of that is control R and now we've got a quad. And often people prefer to even these out, so GG, and just give it a bit of shape there to your quad. Now there's more to be said about this, and this could be tidier. But I'm trying to make you understand the different processes in order to understand topology flow. Particularly for hard surface modelling, and not getting nasty pinching around your models like we did in our shape down here. So do understand that this is not fully optimised yet, but it is giving us the result we need. Now it's worth mentioning that with my original... I did actually do a loop cut down here first and then just use these inside edges for that. But we have got a lot of extra topology going down here which we don't necessarily need. So I did the supporting loop down here first and then used these faces instead. So I've got an extra loop coming down here. If I go into edit mode with both of them, you can see that there's an extra loop coming down there where there isn't here. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing for you. Don't panic if it is. I won't go too fast with this sort of process because I know it's really hard for beginners to understand. Now with my shiny metal material, you can see there's a slight bit of distortion here. And that's the sort of thing we're going to talk about a bit more later on. How we can minimise this sort of distortion and minimise pinching as well, which you may come across. So I hope you're enjoying these exercises. The feedback has been very positive. Do let me know with your thoughts in the comments and how you get on. With any pictures, you can get across to the Discord if you want to chat to me there about these things. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.